Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? So our buddy, Teague Moore, right? Wrestling consultant. He's a, he's a busy man. Yeah, that guy is a wealth of knowledge over 20 years in the game as a coach and NCAA champion for John Smith at Oklahoma State. Teague Moore knows what's going on. And if you're uh, at a loss right now and you're in a parent who's just trying to get a kid in any level, NAIA, JUCO, NCAA, Division One, Two, or Three, Teague Moore, the wrestling consultant, he's the go-to right now, former head coach at American and Clarion University. He's coached at Harvard, Oklahoma State. The guy's been around the block. He knows what's going on. He's a man, right? Biggest, uh, biggest investment, biggest decision in your, in your, your child's life. So, you know, get some answers, get them before it's too late, right? Definitely. Teague knows what's going on. He knows the clearing house. He knows, you know, money. Uh, he knows about scholarships. He knows financial aid. He's better on the block. So that guy, he really knows what's going on. Teague Moore, the wrestling consultant, check him out. Jared will, uh, Get his contact information out for everybody who wants to check out the Wrestling Consultant Teague Moore. Yep, Wrestling Consultant at Gmail or find him on Facebook. All right, we got our first guest, Seth Shoemate, jumping on. Okay, so tonight we have Seth Shoemate, two, two-time Ohio State champion at 195 pounds. I believe the highest state champion as far as weight-wise in the history of Division One. Is that correct, Seth? Uh, I'm pretty sure. I no, I, I don't. I can't think of another one. I know uh, Kevin Vo was third at heavyweight as a freshman. And I don't think anybody else has been any higher than that. So a champ as a freshman, COVID year. What was your COVID year? Sophomore year? Yeah. Well, junior yeah. year. Yeah. Soph- uh, yeah. Sophomore year. My bad. Sophomore year was your COVID year. You didn't get to defend your title. And then uh, champ last year. And this year going for your third state title in, in three attempts, essentially, because you, you, uh, obviously the COVID year got taken from you, but, um, two-time state champ, um, you've pretty much won it all. Everything you've been in, you've either been in the finals of or won. That's correct. Right. Yeah. Iron man champ is a sophomore. Yep. So Iron Man champ is a sophomore. That's amazing. <laughs> you won the Iron Man as a sophomore at 195, and you won the state tournament as a freshman at 195. I don't like. I don't know if guys are doing that, you know, regularly at 195 pounds. What has been your key to your success, being so successful early on in a weight class that is normally dominated by upperclassmen? Um, I'd say consistency. I mean, everybody's putting in the work, but. At the end of the day, you want to be the one still working. But, um, yeah, consistency has been my big thing. You know, whenever I'm not losing, I'm not being consistent. You know, catches up to me. But, you know, that's something I've been working on. Everybody's got their setbacks and things they go through, and that's life. But my biggest thing is consistency. Waking up, lifting before school, practice after, getting a run in, and then yoga or whatever at the end of the night. Go to bed. Get ready for the next day. Wow. So you mentioned you're on the soccer team too, right? Just stay active. You do uh, you in other sports or just soccer and wrestling? Just soccer. Coach said, go for it. You want to see me start running? I said no to cross country. I was like, I don't want to thin out that much. Yeah. So. I mean, you've been at 195, right? All, all yep. year. So you're, you're growing into that, that weight class probably, right? You said you're slimming out, but you don't want to slim, slim down too much. Right. Right. So, uh, so what's what's it looking like, Beast Mode, this time of year? What, what, what's um, your, um... I'd say um, prepping, really. You know, years prior, we haven't had something like this in the fall, and that's always caught up to me. But I'm glad we have it this year. No, no interference, no outside stuff to deal with. So, you know, been going hard three times a day, every single day, except Sunday. It's church day. But – you know, staying consistent, just hard practices. You know, you got to take yourself to deep waters. I like to say that a lot, but it's every single day. Can you lean back real quick? Let's see the shirt you got on. I think it's a Buckeye shirt, is it not? Uh, of course, Blocko. 
Blocko all day long, right? Yeah. Do you get to go to the Ohio RTC at all, or is it super restrictive with COVID and things like that? Or do you still get to, do you get to go and train with Colin Moore and get to be around, you know, the, the program you're going to be a part of, which is what, 15 minutes from, from your high school? Yeah. Um, they, it's, it's pretty restrictive right now with COVID. You know, they have to have certain days that are okayed by the college, but um, October 9th through the, well, that weekend, the two weekends after that, they had RTC on Saturday. And those are the only times I've been in there besides um, the recruit camp or whatever, the prospect camp they had this weekend. Uh, that's the only time I've been in the room, so. Did you, you went to the prospect camp early? Did you commit like as a sophomore? Yeah, first week of sophomore year. Okay, so so you were like what Steber did. Steber committed super early like that. Yeah. Gotcha. What was the prospect camp? You said you were there this past weekend. Good, good. Uh, Would you roll with there? Um, I rolled with uh, Rocco Welsh and uh, like Ethan Smith and Romero, and then second day, I rolled with uh, Russo. Dylan Russo the whole day. So that was pretty fun. I love it. It just doesn't avoid competition. I love it. Uh, we're actually, Fishback's going to be on. You and Fishback wrestled in the Fargo finals for freestyle, right? Right. So you guys wrestled in the junior finals. You were a cadet champ too, though, right? Yeah. So you won freestyle and cadet, runner up in, in juniors, right? Right. So champ at Ironman, champ at Fargo, cadet, Runner up in Car- uh, Fargo Juniors, mm-hmm. right? Who's number one? Did Did Tay Piccolo beat you at who's number one? Yeah. Okay, so you wrestled in who's number one. Only thing you haven't wrestled in is a world championship. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I would have gone to my COVID year. That would have been my last cadet year for UWW. <laughs> Dude, COVID screwed. I know it screwed a lot of people over. But it really screwed you over in the sense that you're not going to get a chance to be a four-time state champ, but that's everybody that's in your grade. I understand that. But, like, I really think he could have had a great showing at, like, the Cadet World, right? Yeah, I would have had some fun out there. <laughs> Those guys wouldn't. You're different, man. You're really different compared to what they're seeing because I don't know if you know it, but they let you get hip to hip a lot. They let you into their body so that they yeah. can step across and do all this funky stuff. What would you do if a guy let you lock his hands around his body? What would you do to him? Go yard and break his <laughs> neck. You would throw them out of the arena, wouldn't you? Yeah. I'd, I'd throw them into the stands. Hopefully I hear those Iranian horns. That'd be sick. Beep, beep. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, have you ever been? Is that the most hostile crowd you've ever heard? How crazy is that? I want to be there. Oh, I love I, it. I want, to, I want to absorb all of it. Oh, it's so awesome. It's awesome. And it's like they're so into it because I was at the 2012 Olympics, London, and we sat in an Iranian section. Burroughs beat uh, Gadarzi of Iran in the finals. We almost got in a couple fist fights. They were actually cool afterwards. But man, yeah. in the moment they were they were really like rabid dogs, man. Yeah. You got that though, right? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> COVID messed me up. I, there was nobody at who's number one last year. That was that threw me off a bit. Yeah, because it was normally a really good event. They used to have it at Lehigh and the Snake Pit, and it was like awesome. And that's when all these ballroom things started to come about, right? Yeah. What is that like when you're in a ballroom wrestling the other number one or two guy in the country? Is it kind of anticlimactic? Yeah. I mean, I like the momentum. I like hearing the oohs and the ahs, but it's real weird because you hear every single part of the body cracking and, you know, you got all the weird stuff going on. It's, it's kind of hard to zone in because you got all the little stuff around you to worry about. But it was a, it was a good transition for me. I liked it. It was a good experience. I'm glad I got that over with. So, so what's the fall look like? You, you going super 32? What, right? You're signing yeah. up for fall, right? Is that the plan? Yeah. I'm hitting up uh, Columbus Day Duels this weekend just to, you know, knock some rust off. Uh, Feeling I'll good. There. I'll be there Sunday. I'll see you there. Wait. Um, then su- super 32. And then I'm really buckling down for Iron Man. Nice. Nice. Iron Man, we could see a potential rematch at Iron Man between you and Fishback, right? Yep. 
Oh man, you don't understand how bad I want to be in the gym for that. Like that is going to be incredible. I'm guessing they would put him as the one seed and use the two seed unless the past champions goes into it. Then you'll be the one seed. He'll be the two seed, but whatever. It doesn't matter to you. It'd be the last match too. Right. Tim? I mean, it, of course it would be. Yes. Right. Yes. To. Why wouldn't it be the last? I, match? I don't know. You I'm asking you. I'm asking. Yes, you. That's how they, they set it up like that. Yes. It would probably be the last match. I mean, yeah, I, that's what I want. Seth, what do you, what do you want? I mean, if I'm going to be honest, I want the, I want the bottom seed. I want to, I want to go through everybody. I want to wrestle all the best guys. I don't care who I really wrestle. I mean, I know if I want to get my one ranking back for the graduate my senior year, I got to go through everybody, you know? So, I mean, I'm already, I'm already grinding to the stone right now. I mean, strict meal plans, running every single day, you know, push myself to that limit. So, I mean, I'm ready. I mean, years, years, uh, past two years, uh, COVID messed me up. You know, I didn't have access and I, I didn't have money to travel. So, you know, it's been really cool. Everything's open back up. So, I mean, I'm really strict with my, with my body right now. My mind's at ease. I mean, I'm, I'm ready. I mean, I'm good. When did that come into play? You know, you're still, you know, high school senior. Have you always been that dialed in or kind of when did that, that, you know, switch flip? I really, I hated wrestling after quarantine, you know, going into my junior year. I was like, this sucks. Like I almost wanted to walk away from it. I was like burn out everything, but you know, you know, you go through those hardships and you just got to realize it's life. You, know, you got to keep praying every night. You, know, you got to wake up the next day. You just got to keep battling. But, you know, after so many battles, you kind of fall in love with it. And, you know, I had to get surgery like a couple months before Fargo. And I wanted to really test myself. I, I want to see how far I could really make it in two weeks. I want to see what the country had for me in two weeks. So I got beat, but second place isn't that bad. But I really fell in love with it again. And three or four is fun to me. Three or four practices a day is fun. So I really, I'm really loving it right now. Life is really good. What's the well. surgery? The surgery? What is that? What kind of like puts you on the downward? What what puts you on the downward side of it to not loving it anymore? Oh, no. Um, quarantine. Just no fans, no nothing. Um, not access to anything. You coming in, you're sluggish. Your body's not used to it. You know, I. I got fat over corny. I was up to like 230. I was big. I had a little gut on me, but you know, if you, I didn't, I didn't like that first getting back into it. You know, it was real weird. It was a big change, but I'm glad everything's kind of like normalizing right now. You know, so I mean, wow. I'm really loving it. Wow. 230 and you're 201 now. You must feel like a different person. Yeah, I feel really good. Wow. That is, do this 30 pounds. That's crazy. I, I, yeah, I cut from 230 for who's number one. Holy so. smokes. Wow. But, it, but so wait, when you cut all the weight, you probably didn't feel good because it was all water weight, right? Right. And yeah, so, you felt like so, sluggish, wow. weak, you know, rubber legs. Yeah, that's terrible. But now that you're like living at the weight, you probably feel great, right? Yeah, I feel amazing. You know, oh, I had man. surgery and, um, June, I think, or no, it was like two weekends left in May. I had my meniscus surgery and I was out until like the last weekend of June. My first live go practice was um, first day of Fargo camp for Ohio. Wow. <laughs> so you literally rehabbed right into the Fargo finals. Yeah, that basically my first match back was um, first match at Fargo. Oh my God. My wow. second, yeah, my third match was number 10 K in the country. AJ Heath, you just committed Oklahoma. Match right after that, Evan Bates. So and then Colby Franklin and then Fishback. I mean, I had a heater. I, I couldn't even like walk to the finals. I had to Uber there. Holy smokes. The my body was beat, but you know, it was, it was a real fun experience. It really taught me a lot. You know, I have to be ready at all times, but. I mean, I got to control what I can control. So you've been, uh, you've been, uh, you got hurt at super 32 last year, or the year before. Mm. Um, I didn't, I didn't place that super 32 till last year. Till last year. Yeah. And I broke, I didn't break my rib, but I was going to say it was your ribs, wasn't it? 
yeah, the cartilage. So my ribs went like that in the quarterfinals off an inside trip. I, I crunched down too hard and misplaced my ribs. They went this, like, they went cross right up in here. So, I mean, I had to deal with that in the, the rest of the tournament, but I mean, it's nothing new. You got you to do what you got to do. Yeah, that's tough, though, because the ribs, every time you breathe, it hurts. Yeah. It, you can move. It, it sucks. It's terrible. Uh, biggest thing going into Ohio State. What do you have to do to make the jump? You know, we know that you you hide from no one. You wrestle all the best competition. You hide from no competition, no no tournament. You go to the Ironman. You've won it. You've won multiple state titles. Fargo, you've won it all, man. Everything you have, only thing you haven't won is the Worlds. What do you got to do to make the jump and the level change and become an NCAA champion at Ohio State? Um. I've been really focusing on stricting or constricting down my, you know, my arsenal. You know, I'm not, I'd say after Fargo, well, I mean, a little bit before Fargo, when I started training for Fargo. But, you know, from that time to now, I've really been like condensing my offense. You know, I'm not, uh, um, is it back? All right, there. Um, I haven't, I haven't been, um, I still wrestle like a feel. You know, if I'm ever in the upper body positions, you know, I can let it fly. But I've really been um, working on staying one step ahead in the hand fight. Um, you know, just wrestle onto my hooks, you know, getting to my offense, really, and only taking two shots, you know. And then you got your uh, short offense. Short offense is the thing I've really been working on, too. And I think that that's going to be my uh, bread and butter going into this year. I feel like I'm really going to start dominating, not just winning. So just really high crotch, single leg, low pick front headlock. That's all I've been doing, just working on my footwork and my, you know, chaining my hand fighting together, everything. So I feel like that's really going to be a stepping stone going into Ohio State, just really condensing it, you know, consistency again, and, you know, just keeping my head strong, ready for whatever. Jared, when we look at that, when we talk to him, we're going to transition from you, Seth, into uh, – we're going to go to Fishback. Are you going to stick around a little bit and talk to him? Or are you guys – are you cordial? I mean, you're teammates in Fargo. Are you guys good together? Yeah, I mean, I don't care. Okay. We wrestle with each other. It doesn't matter. I mean, I it's not it. like I'm not, not going to wrestle each other again. I mean, I'm not – I'm not even looking for like trash talk or anything. I just, yeah. Okay. Like if we can get you guys to overlap a minute or two, that, that would be cool. But uh, yeah, he's jumping on here in a minute. Okay. But the, the, the last thing I have for you is, you know, you got a really good uh, coach Van Gundy's a great high school coach, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, who kind of cooled you off the, the, I know the feel is there. If someone comes up or upper body, you're going to, you're going to give them a ride, but who pushed you? to start the leg attacks and the short offense who you got our great high school coaches. I, you know, stated earlier, but who pushed you to focus on more high percentage offense, I guess I would say, because, you know, not everybody can just grab everybody and lat drop them or headlock them or inside trip them. Who put you on more high percentage attacks? Um, Weber. I mean, Weber's Weber's really my coach. So, you know, he's picked me up through all the setbacks. You know, he's been – he's had my back through my whole high school career, my eighth grade years. You know, that's been basically like my second dad. So, he's really the one pushing me. You know, Coach Ryan's intervening now too. You know, he's giving me tips. He's giving me tricks. He's really – everybody's really helping me there now. So, just him or Weber, Ohio State staff, you know, my family holding me down. Nice. So nice. That's a great support system you have there. Uh, yeah. the question for me is uh, whenever someone in the Columbus area doesn't go to Ohio state, I always got to ask, why didn't you go to Ohio state? I guess the question for you is it's a no brainer. Why wouldn't you go to Ohio state? Right. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. It's, it's the place to be. We're building something special. I think we're going to win it every year. I'm there. We're going for national titles. Listen, when they have people like that, like you who believe that, that's when they get into positions where they were in, you know, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 8, 2008, when they were runner up. I mean, basically every year Tom Ryan's been there, except for like his first couple of years when, you know, before he got it going. 
And once he got rolling, man, they're always in the contention for a trophy at the NCAA tournament. They've won the Big Ten a couple times. I mean, what yeah. is there to say? You know, there's it, it, it's all right there. The facility's the best facility in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. We're my class is really we're already brothers. Like we hang out all the time. You know, Gavin comes up and stays at my house. We go and get work in. Gavin Brown. You know, Feldman stayed with me before. You know, me and Feldman are good buddies. We talk every single day. And uh, Feldman and Nick are good buddies because they live close to each other. And uh, I, I just saw McCrone. McCrone's from Ohio. So, you know, we always give Ohio boys love. And then um, the twins that just committed from PA, the ones freshman state champ, you know, they're cool. I was just talking to them this weekend, you know. So, I mean, when you really surround yourself with like-minded people, it's hard not to – it's hard not winning. Like, you know, we want to get in there. We want to scrap. You know, we don't want to hold back anything. We want to make the most of it. And we're not just – talking NCAA is going to leave a legacy, create a culture that, you know, classes coming in behind us are going to follow, you know, and then going into the Olympics and stuff like that. We want to, we want to bring back world medals, Olympic medals too. So complete package, complete package. I mean, that's like a recruiting pitch for Ohio state right there. (laughs) I mean, you know that you know Iowa thinks the same thing. Penn State thinks the same thing. Do you guys talk about who's going everywhere, anywhere else, or are you guys just focused on who, who's who you got in your room and who you guys are going to be able to win with? I mean, I don't really know how to put it. I mean, everybody talks to each other. It's really just like you know, you want to you want to make something special about it, or you want to uh, be cool with your brothers. Like you want to win with your brothers, or people we've been hanging out with we've been hanging out with Mendez a lot too I hope we get him but you know my outlook on it is like we already got something special going on so it's either off on board or we're gonna you're gonna get taken out at some point that's the way I go about it nice I love it I love it that's great man that's great all right we got our we got our next guest on hang, hang on for a minute we'll keep you on for a minute here so we got dylan coming on dylan how's it going we got seth on jared myself good to see you. how's everything going in aurora uh, it's going pretty good 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 okay so you guys wrestled in the fargo finals are you going to super 32 as well dylan uh no i'm not no so the next possible matchup that you two could have is potentially iron man right uh yeah probably oh man I want to, I don't live far from there. I know you don't live far from there. I only live about 15 minutes from Dylan. How far is Walsh Jesuit from Aurora? Probably like 20, probably 25 minutes, maybe 30. Nice. So I just can't wait to see it. And I think there'll be guys like, uh, is, uh, geez, oh, Pete's Rylan Rogers. He'll probably be at the weight class, right? Yeah. And TJ Stewart's moving up too. So Stewart Rogers, anybody else you've heard of? Well, so since it's Ohio weights, a lot of the 182 pounders are going to probably 190. Yeah. So 82 and 95 will kind of be combined, basically. Oh, my goodness. That is going to be a killer weight class. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's going to be 190. Uh, Dylan, how big are you right now? I weigh like 195 pretty much every morning. So you're 95 and you are two about 197, uh, Seth? Yeah, right around there. 190 is probably not going to be a problem for you, is it? No. Oh, my God. I can't wait for this matchup. Any Anything you guys are looking forward to besides wrestling one another potentially? No, I mean, if we don't wrestle at Iron Man, I'm sure we're going to wrestle at Brexville too. I mean, yeah, it either way, it's going to be a battle for the one. So you guys are at the, you're at the same – you're twice. There's two potential matchups between you guys. Yeah. Brexville and I love it because Brexville is the holiday tournament. Brexville is like December 29th and 30th, usually like around Midlands and scuffle time. Wow. I did not realize you guys were at that tournament too. So if you guys don't hit it, Ironman, I got I, that. That's another place. That's like 25 minutes away from me. So the, I win, I win either way, man. I'm going to be able to watch you guys wrestle either way. I'm pumped. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right, Seth, do you got anything else for us? Nope. 
Nope. You guys don't want to trash talk each other or anything. I, we don't want that. Not that we want that, but you guys are good. Yeah, I'm good. All I'm right. working. Tell Seth. Seth Weber, we said what's up, Seth. Um, and we said hello. All right. Seth, good luck, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, boys. Yeah. Yep. All right, Dylan. Welcome to the Barbarian. I guess we're giving you guys like 25, 20, 25 minute slots. Welcome to the Barbarian Hour. Dylan Fishbeck, the uh, number one, 195 in the country. Depends what poll you look at, I guess. Right, Dylan? Yeah. I'm guessing you're not worried about polls at all. You're worried about uh, snapping necks and cashing checks, right? Yeah. <laughs> so f- you and Seth wrestled in the Fargo finals. You tech fall them. I, I pinned them. You yeah. pinned them. Sorry. Was, would it have been a tech mall? Uh, probably not. I, I don't know. It could have been, but I think I was up like maybe four points at the time. Maybe it was like turning into six points, I think. Okay. Maybe. So it was like a six zero lead. You're no, leading by it, six. It was, a, it was a close match. Okay. Yeah, well, you guys, did you guys train at the training camp together? Uh, not really. Uh, we went, we wrestled one live go and that was the only time we ever wrestled. Okay. So after you guys compete, you know, you guys see each other at one of the two or both this, is that something you guys would have trained afterwards, you know, or, or uh, how, what would that look like? I mean, honestly, when you have two studs like you, you know, within uh, the same state, you know, what's that look like? I, I don't know. Like it's, it's really hard to find guys around our size, especially. In was, it's not like you're lightweight and you got all yeah. these options, right? So like other than college guys, and there's really not that many college guys around our size either. So. I, I mean, it's pro- it'd probably be an option. Depends. I don't know. So you are headed to NC State, mm-hmm. right? Yep. It's Raleigh. Is it Raleigh or Durham? It's Raleigh. So Raleigh. Yeah. Durham is Duke. Yeah. Yeah. So Raleigh, Durham, and then Chapel Hill is right there, too. They're all within, like, five, ten minutes of each other, aren't they? Yeah. Well, like – it's called like the research triangle. So basically it's like makes a triangle. They're all within like 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. They're right there, man. Cause yeah. I've done some stuff at uh university of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. And I remember we met somebody in like Raleigh and we were there. Like it was crazy how fast we were there. I was like, Holy yeah. smokes. And the airport's real small. Well, it used to be, I don't know if it is anymore, but um, NC state, man, they are on the upswing, you know, Seth's going to Ohio state. You're going to NC state. I, you know, I got to ask you, being an Ohio guy, why NC State? So, NC State is, well, for me, uh, in the recruiting process, uh, the biggest thing was culture. And I believe NC State has the best culture by far of all the schools I talked to. And just the culture at NC State of, like, just with the coaches and the whole team. And they're just all great people. And just kind of support everyone as a whole. And that's why I like NC State the most. And obviously they have a beautiful campus and they're pretty good at wrestling. So those are just, uh, I guess, extra benefits. But the culture of uh, the Wolfpack basically is just overall really good. When so we talk about it, when we talk about it, you guys, um, you know, they're obviously – he's coach Papalizio is an amazing leader, right? He's an amazing CEO coach, got excellent assistant coaches. He just lost a couple guys though. Right. Yeah. A couple guys, the, the RTC and left. He had some assistant coaches leave. Um, some cor- went to Cornell, right? Yeah. It was just uh, the one coach and then Gwizdowski followed him. Vincent, away. Vincent and Gwizdowski, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Hall is still there. Yeah. Um, Coach Popolese is the head coach, and then I think Clayton or uh, uh, Jack, Kevin Jack, and then Kevin Tim, Jack, Timmy McCall. Uh, he's been a volunteer assistant, and then he just uh, finally be- became on staff as an assistant. Uh, okay, Wisconsin guy. Yeah. Okay, so McCall would be someone you would train with. He's a bigger guy. Yeah, uh, I actually went with him about a month ago. Uh, they came up and ran a practice and uh I rolled with him a little bit uh before he was number one. So he'll probably help me out a lot. So who's number one? You had a huge win there, right? Yeah. Huge I mean dude, you're on a roll, man. 
<laughs> you want Fargo? You want who's number one? I mean, when do you start figuring out what you're going to pick and choose to go to, Dylan? Like, you know, you're not going to Super 32. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you really have to go to Super 32, right? Yeah. But why? What? What's the method to the madness as far as I'm going to go here? I'm not going to go here. What, why, how do you pick and choose competitions? So I, I kind of debated going to Super 32, but then – I uh, was kind of talking to like my coaches and my parents that just like, I mean, I always played football, so I never went anyway, but this year I thought about going uh, simply for that reason, because I had never gone and, but I think it's important to be healthy going into the wrestling season. And especially this tournament is like kind of preseason right before the season. I think it draws out the folk style season uh, even longer. So it, I think it's important for me to be healthy going into the season. So that's why I chose not to wrestle at Super 32. And because I, th- I think we wrestle a tough enough schedule that probably going to wrestle most of those guys anyway during the season. So there's really no point in me going to Super 32 right now. You talk being healthy and, and Zeb says the method to the madness. Is the plan 197 NC State? You know, you're walking around at 195. You know, what what's it look like? You know, to- Yeah, I mean – Obviously, probably right now I'd be an 84 pounder, but uh, the NC State coaches don't really care what weight I'm at. They're they basically just recruit us for who we are, not as a body. So they don't care what weight I'm at. Uh, hopefully, I'll get up big enough to wrestle 197. Uh, I know we'll see once I get down to Raleigh and start their program, pretty much, and see how much I could put on to maybe. Wrestle 97, but I'll probably be 84, at least for the first year uh, in college. Do you miss body bagging people in football? Just crushing people, because I know you did. Yeah, uh, I mean, I go to the games and watch now, uh, which is obviously fun, but it's definitely still kind of hard to watch. and our team this year is pretty solid. Right now we're seven and zero, and probably we're, I think we're ranked like top three right now. So that that side of it definitely makes me miss playing, knowing that I would be on the field like Friday night when I'm just watching. But uh, I chose not to play just because I couldn't risk getting injured. Uh, so I've gotten injured the past two years. A lot of people didn't probably don't know that. Uh, I broke my hand my sophomore year. And then I fractured my back last year playing football. So it's probably just best for me not to play this year uh, just because I have so much to risk in college. Maybe if you stop murdering people, if you stop murdering people and using your body like that, maybe you wouldn't be, maybe you wouldn't be hurt all the time. Yeah. And that's another reason why uh, I am not going to super 32 is because I was always banged up going into wrestling just from football. So, like, a part of that is just being healthy for this year. uh, Have you ever watched Alex Marinelli when he just pounds people? He pulls on their head and he pounds them, and he's always hitting his knee, and he kicks them in the legs. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and if you've ever noticed, at the NCAA tournament, he's always really beat up, right? Mm -hmm. When you punish people, when you have a punishing style, like you you were a linebacker in football, right? Yeah, linebacker, running back. Dude, you were killing people. You were smashing people. Yeah. When you're punishing people, it's punishing on you too. Yeah, definitely. Right? And I think that's, I mean, like, I'm like, I get where you're coming from with the football thing. Yeah. I get it, right? I, I Like, I get it because you have such a punishing style and you're, you're slick in wrestling. You're real slick in wrestling. Mm-hmm. Football, it's, it's hard to be slick in football because yeah. you're a battering ram, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah. you missed the body bagging people, just crushing people, huh? Yeah. So but, what? Yeah. So what's the fall look like? You know, you're used to grinding, right? Heck of a summer. You're used to football, and then, you know, all these tournaments. So what? You know, what's it look like now until season? You know, Seth was on and saying now he's grinding multiple times a day. What, what's it look like? You know, a day, a week for you right now? Uh, so right now, I actually after he's number one, I've taken pretty much time off like a couple weeks off already uh I actually messed up my thumb pretty bad so I was letting that heal a little more and still healing but 
Uh, I haven't wrestled at all pretty much since who's number one. And then I just started lifting yesterday. So I'm just going to start lifting a little bit this week, maybe start wrestling probably a little more next week, but it won't be as, I guess, intense just yet. But once we get closer to like uh, November, when the season starts, I'll probably ramp it up more. Seth was talking about how COVID really took a toll on him, right? Mm-hmm. It was just everybody was out of routine and you know, there was no people in the stands and he just really didn't like that. Did COVID take a toll on you like that too? As far as like during the season with like fans and stuff? Or Everything, just-, just the whole like it's hard to get motivated to work out. It's hard to – he I mean, said he, during, he, he during struggled. Like, yeah. During the like initial summer of COVID, I – I think it actually benefited me a lot uh, because I never really committed to lifting like consistently. That was the first time I actually started lifting like consistently four days a week. And so that helped me kind of, I guess, almost kind of like lifting a lot more now. And so ever since then, it it just kind of helped me lifting wise. But wrestling wise, I mean, yeah, it kind of sucked not to have fans and whatnot but either way you're just wrestling another kid so that didn't bother you you actually went the other way you got better you got better because you dedicated to lifting right yeah I mean it was good for you yeah because I've always been a middleweight uh pretty much my whole life and going up to an upper weight is definitely a different style of wrestling and I think that has benefited me uh just because I've I kind of wrestle almost like a lightweight in some, uh, like some ways. And so moving up to an upper weight, I think in my favor, most of the time, not fighting the scale. What is that like now? Do you, do you love not fighting with the scale? Yeah. Uh, it, it's, I think it's the best way to wrestle, honestly, as long as you're, I mean, I've, I've cut before obviously, but, uh, I think if you're strong enough for the weight, and believe that you can compete at the weight you want to wrestle, then I think it's the healthiest way to compete. Uh, you don't have to worry about cutting weight or, and a lot of guys that cut a lot tend to be injured. So me not cutting has also helped me kind of stay healthier. And I, I like wrestling, not having to worry about my weight too much. So Jared was the same size as he is right now. And he wrestled 125 pounds and they used to not draw because you can draw in college. You know that, right? Really? I think he started Jerry, weight, right? Yeah. They just started that when we were in college. I think. Yeah. Was- when we were in college, you could draw. You, they just started drawing because it was a weight cutting thing. They wouldn't draw for Jared on like these weeknight duels. <laughs> these, he was cutting to 25. Jared, what'd you, what were you cutting out from 40? Uh, there was, uh, I, I had it under control, but I was, you know, thinned out already. But yeah, it was a, oh. The worst thing we could have done, right? Because I was cutting me and little Mark Wentz. Remember, Mark used to like be oh, in the corner. <laughs> he, he was bad though. Yeah, they were. Hey, they were. But it would, we should have drew one right? hour weigh in, dude. Yeah. One hour weigh in. This guy was yeah. massive, the same size human as he is now. Would cut <laughs> cut down to one twenty five on a weeknight, and it was like a two. We'd have these weird Tuesday night and Thursday yeah. night duels. I remember. Oh, it was horrible, man. It was horrible. I'm, yeah. I felt bad for the guys who cut weight. I didn't cut any weight. Yeah, yeah, you're right. No, I, I'm just agreeing with you. You're right. Guys are hurt a lot, man. They're hurt because yeah. they're cutting weight. Mm-hmm. Ugh, yeah, no I, thanks. I, I cut uh, cut my freshman sophomore year a decent amount, and then after that, I was just pretty much wrestle whatever I weigh and feel good going into my matches. And I think it's the best way to perform. So when you're getting back on the mat here in the next couple of weeks, who, who are you going to be rolling with? Yeah, that's actually a good question because there's not really not many guys all, all my training partners uh pretty much are in college or uh live far away and probably gonna train with logan shepherd uh quite a bit uh i mean he lives like an hour away but we trained leading up to fargo and he's a good partner for me and then there's a couple guys out of college that i've talked to uh i might start rolling with and in season, I'm probably going to have to go with a couple older guys as well because this this next year, I'm just pretty much focusing on 
getting better for college. Like, I mean, I, yeah, this year is like important, I guess, but I'm more focused on getting prepared for college. Right. Big picture, right? Yeah. You have anything else for us? We have uh, Casey Swiderski's jumping on here next if you want to hang on. And, uh, right. But do you have anything else before we let, let him into the chat? Uh, no, I, I don't really have too much to say. Well, just let me li- listen. I can cut a quick promo because we got two guys that want that won it. Who's number one? One guy beat the pound for pound guy, number one guy in the country. One guy is the number one guy in the country. So uh, yeah, let's have let's have two. Well, why wouldn't we have two guys from who's number one on that both won? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. He just jumped off. Hold on. I don't know if he had a connection issue. Dylan, how good do you feel at like 195 pounds wrestling 190? I mean, did the guys feel big out in Fargo at 195? Uh. Yeah, there was a, I mean, pretty much every kid I think was bigger than me. I don't know. Some people say I look big, but I walk around the weight I wrestle. So uh, kids that were, did feel bigger, but I, I feel like they didn't feel stronger, if that makes any sense. Like they were big, but I felt like I was just as strong. Did you run in any shoe law type dudes? Just massive humans. Uh, At junior duels, actually, yeah, there's probably a couple kids that, Kid Wyatt Volker from Iowa. I wrestled him at junior duels. He he was pretty jacked. Wyatt then, Volker's dad is an NCAA champ for Iowa State, I believe. Oh, really? I didn't know. Yeah. But, yeah. Wyatt Volker's the real deal, dude. Yeah, he, he was a Greco uh, Fargo champ in Greco. So. Yeah, Volker's a stud. Hey, was Rylan Rogers third at 195 this year at Fargo? Yeah. Who was – so it was you and Seth, and then was Rylan third? Yeah, Rylan. He lost to Colby Franklin earlier in the tournament, and then he beat him for third. Got it. So he came back and beat him. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, uh, wait a minute. Is your old teammate from Western Reserve going to be at Ironman? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Because I think they're there. They've been there in the past. I don't know why they wouldn't be there. Yeah. I don't know if he's 195 or 220. Uh, well, since it's 190 and 215, I, I already guess he'd be 215. Got it. Hey, Casey, turn your camera for us real quick. Which way is it right now? It's 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 up and down. We need it sideways. There we go. All oh, right. Man. Look at that lion's mane. Jared, look at that lion's mane head of hair. What do, got, what do you got rocking? You got what you got any cab? What do you got under there? Let's see it. Uh, not him. Uh, he's got you got the curls though. Boy band hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. has got the boy band hair, but he's a killer. I like having two killers on. Okay, so both of you guys won at who's number one? Swiderski, they're calling yours the upset of the year. Did you know that? Yeah, I seen, I seen, yeah. You don't think it was the upset of the year, though, do you? No, no, honestly, I don't. <laughs> I thought you were going to win all along, right? Yeah, for sure. That was the plan the whole time. And uh, obviously, I'm not going to sit here and say it was an upset. No, there's two people that know it wasn't an upset, me and him. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, Dylan, going into that event, was there any doubt in your mind that you weren't going to win? No, nah, I just pretty much focus on myself and wrestle my matches pretty much and not really worry about anything else except just how I wrestle. What was your favorite part about that? Because that's a real individualized thing. The who's mm-hmm. number one, they fly yeah. you and a coach down, right? Yeah, they uh, they only flew me down. They flew you, so your coach and parents and everybody else had to pay their own way to go to Dallas, right? Yeah, pretty much. What is it like? Because it's not you're not traveling in a team. What did, did you did you did you like that or was it weird? I mean, it was pretty cool, but it was also like it was kind of weird in a way because never wrestled an event like that. Uh, I don't know. It was it was it wasn't even like a duel either. It was just like a totally different like experience, but it, it was definitely pretty cool. Nice. Casey, what'd you think? Did you like, who, who did you coach, uh, who came down with you, Coach Roberts? Scotty B, uh, man. Um, Scotty Burnett came down. He was one, he was in my corner. Um, Simmons was there, my dad. Roberts did come down by himself. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah two was, guys. Yeah, two guys. Two guys who won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Dundee, Michigan's not playing. Aurora's like that. Aurora's got like, you guys aren't that big, and you got a bunch of national, a couple of nationally ranked guys, right, Dylan? Yeah, we have. Three nationally ranked guys right now. How many for Dundee, Casey? I know we know two number one guys. How many other guys? You know what? That's it, man. Just you, is it you two guys? But uh, we got a lot of guys right on the cusp. 
Um, but we, I mean, we had eight state champs last year, so you guys had eight but, state oh, champs. Oh. Yeah, we had eight state champs last year, and Buell <laughs> that's was over half the, the weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. Oh my god, I did not I mean, know that. Last year we had more nationally ranked guys. We had Stony and uh, I think just Stony was nationally ranked, and me, Braden, obviously, but. I think there's more. I can't even remember right now, honestly. I love it. I yeah, love we had. We you had guys are both stuff. Burnett guys, though, right? Both of you guys go to Burnett stuff, don't you? Yeah, I, I, I go to camps in the summer. Camps in the summer, and then Casey, you've been going ever since you were a little guy, right? Yeah, I've been going forever. I love it, Dylan. You came when you came from oh, Jesus, Illinois, or where did you guys? Did you go California, Illinois, then Ohio? Is that what it was? Yeah. yeah. I remember when you guys came right from Illinois, you were probably like a sixth or seventh grader, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember you being there as like a middle schooler. Yeah. It's so crazy. I mean, I feel so old right now thinking about this. Yeah. Casey ran through a plate glass, ran through Scotty's plate glass window, which we'll talk about when you're off. But Dylan, do you have anything else for us before we get into talking to Casey? Uh, no, I mean, I don't know. I, I would say... Like you said, Casey, uh, it's the biggest upset, but I, I was telling people Casey was going to win that whole week. I didn't think it was that much of an upset. And So three people, Casey, three people knew. Three people, yeah. Three people. I know your old man knew too. Dylan, yeah. thank you for the time. We will see you. Uh, I'll probably be seeing you during training camps and every st- stuff coming up here in the next couple of weeks, all right? Yeah, thank you for having me. Yep, thanks for the time, Dylan. See you, Dylan. Oh, we got the juggernaut. The ju- you know that's your nickname. Scotty's always called you the juggernaut, right? Yep. Yep. So so we're just gonna lead off with, with a little we're gonna get this kicked off with Casey Swiderski. Biggest upset of the year is what most people are saying. Well, Flo Russell said it, but um it's actually the video is tagged as the upset of the year. You knocked off uh number one pound for pound wrestler in the country, right? Yep. It's Mendez, right? Uh, is he from Crown Point? Yeah, Crown Point, Indiana. Crown Point, Indiana. And um, I saw older Zertzis is his coach, right? Yep. Alex. Alex is his coach. Yep. So um, Jesse Mendez, number one pound for pound wrestler in the in the United States of America in a wild, a great match, by the way. And, and it's indicative of your style, man. Explosive goer. But let's let's rewind back to how long ago was it that you ran through the plate glass window? You were like 10 years old. You know, I think I was actually, uh, I was like thir- 13, I don't know, 12 or 13. I don't even remember. I, think my, I, remember I was like 80 pounds and like 85 pounds. And I was staying at Scotty's like all the time. I was always with Scotty, you know, and we always played basketball. And it was like the winter time almost. It was, it was pretty cold. So I'm putting on, I, I remember exactly what I had. I had gray sweatpants on and a Ohio State hoodie. And uh, I put on my shoes to, and in his old house, it was just like kind of the front door and then the back door, you could see it and you could like run, you could like, you know, run right through it. And uh, so I like go from the front door and like I start running to go out the back door. There's a glass sliding door and it looked wide open, like to me. So I'm like, I'm going to like try and sprint through this to go play basketball, you know? And it was completely closed and I ran through it. So, and, and I just, I just ran through it and I stumbled and the only, I cut my hands up on the glass that hit the ground and that was it. So you were 85 pounds, 12 years old and you ran through a plate glass window. Yeah. 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 Dude, I'm a 250 pound man. And I would, it would probably stymie me and knock me out. If I tried to, I have two of them, I have two sliding glass doors. Yeah, If I tried to run through them, it would knock me out. What was Scotty's reaction? Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Dude. Oh, Oh, and he was laughing. He was laughing. Were your hands bleeding immediately or did did you guys get stitches? No, I, I just, I mean, there was like, I had to pick out a bunch of glass on my hands. I, I, I still have some scars, but. It, it wasn't that bad. It's wrapped him up. Had two clubs for like a week, and then I was back on it. I was back in the mat. So he calls you the Juggernaut. Do you yeah. know the Marvel character, the Juggernaut? It's like yeah. this big gigantic guy, and he can't be stopped. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's like the ju- he's the Juggernaut, dude. Yeah. He's the Juggernaut. He ran through my plate glass window. Yeah. <laughs> so it was actually a slider, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, slider. So it was winter, and they had to get. 
Did they have to board it up? I think they got it. It was covered, and they got it pretty quick. So. Oh, my God. Hey, now with COVID, that'd take you six months to get that. Do you realize that? Yeah, right, right. This is like the supply chain's all jacked up. Like, I'm getting uh, siding, windows, new windows, new siding, and new gutters. And I was like, yeah, you think you can do it before next summer? The guy's like, oh, yeah, you're probably looking at spring. You know what I mean? He's looking you know, six, eight months down the road to get all that replaced. So that's just how it is. But, okay. So, Casey, the number one oh, – first things first. Did they have you ranked number one in most – in the flow poll? I don't even look at it. Like now? Yeah, are you ranked number one? Yeah, I am now. Yeah. Okay, but you beat the pound for pound guy. Is he ranked two behind you? No, no, no. I'm actually not ranked – I'm not ranked number one in the pound for pound. No, 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 no. You shouldn't be ranked number one. I mean, I think you could yeah, no. be the pound for pound guy. What are you pound for pound? 17. You're so- – you beat the one. I know, I know. I, I, I was never in the pound for pound. And I've beaten plenty of guys in there. I mean, it's hard, you know, being from Dundee, it's hard to get in there. But I'm in there now, and I'm, I'm going to climb up real quick. So, Do you even care that they have you at 17? No, I really I really don't. I mean, I'm, I plan on doing some college opens here soon. So, Oh, you're doing opens? I think that's I think that's the plan. So. Did you just wrestle in the grappler? No, I didn't. I actually – so – Right after who's number one, I told my dad, I was like, dude, I'm not going. I'm not going to the grappler. I'm, I'm going to take a chill pill. You know, we got this, we got the job done. And I trained for seven weeks harder than I ever had in my life. And I told him, I was like, I'm just going to chill, you know, go to school, not miss school, and 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 chill until season, you know. I'm not doing Super Day 2 either. So people can say I'm running or whatever. That is the least thing I ever do. So and people know me. People who know me know that, so. Dude, you are the last guy. Did you and Dylan Fishbeck are the last guy who run? You do not run from anybody. Yeah, right, right. The so. problem with you two is you heard all the workout partners. Yeah, Coach Burnett's like, I don't think I can get him anymore. He's that good. Yeah. He, yeah, oh, he, he told me that. I never heard him really say that about a high school kid. He's like, I don't know if I can get him anymore. That's yeah. that's a real testament to you, man. That's like the level you're at right now is. I mean, you, yeah, I'm you getting up, man. I'm feeling real, real – uh, I'm ready to jump some levels even from that, you know. So, you know, that guy beat – that guy beat college All-Americans, and, and uh, he beat that – Carter Young dude just beat Seth Gross, and Mendez beat that guy twice. So, like, it, it really just shows, like, where the high school – the opportunities, like, high school wrestlers have now, it shows that they're ready. You know, these dudes are ready. Like, the, the levels have jumped so much, so – Right. So, so what college opens are you looking at? Is it kind of like um, I don't know yet. Schedule, then? I don't know yet. Um, it's just planned right now. And I definitely want to get my, myself on the map. And if if that's the way to get um climb the um pound for pound, then that's what I'm gonna do. So because that's that's what Mendez did. You know, he beat a bunch of college dudes. So hey. Just so you know, they're allowed to ride your hips. <laughs> when you yeah. wrestle in college, they're allowed to cheat oh, yeah. and hold you down and stop. Right, right. Yeah. You know that, I, right? Yeah. I, uh, I, you know, I was never, I was never not like, I was never bad on bottom, but it just wasn't my thing. And obviously like I wrestle on my feet and I, that's one thing I did for Mendez. I knew he could throw boots in and, and rip your arms off. Like you watch me wrestle on bottom. I was so sealed off and like i was so prepared for that you know and the whole riding time thing so i i you know i'm prepared on bottom at this point so i mean a strangler does a strangler ever get on top of you yeah he has uh not much folk style actually i haven't done much folk style with him i also i go there a lot for in more of the freestyle season and you know he's just i you can't do nothing on the, on the bottom and, and, and freestyle with him like literally nothing I mean, he's going to turn you no matter what. He squeezes you. I don't know how. You wouldn't even know. But he it's it's insane how much – how hard he squeezes you. His leverage is incredible, too. Yeah, yeah, him, yeah. Hey, him and Jared wrestled in college. Jared, the co-host here, they wrestled. Oh, really? Jared. Jared, I know you don't want me to bring it up. <laughs> I know you don't want me to bring it up, but how bad did you actually beat him? He uh, – I don't know. what the, It was a decision. But, yeah, he uh, it was a duel. We won the duel, and I – I beat him. I forget what a couple points, maybe. 
Was that at 25? Yeah, 25. Yeah. Did you win the Mac that year? Yeah, I think that year I won the Mac. I was running up, but yeah. He so put the he boots in and I got out, and I think that was a different, you know. I he got reversed. boots in on you? He put the went to put the boots in. I, re, I think I reversed him to his back or something. I think that was a difference in the match. I'm surprised he didn't murder you. Yeah. Dude, yeah. he's a killer. The guy's he an absolute one killer. Nothing. He did beat me one nothing the Michigan State Open one year. I didn't go under him, and he beat me one nothing, and then I beat him in the duel. Yeah. You guys split. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Wow. Okay, so you're training with Scotty. You train with with Coach Simmons, Nick Simmons, um, but your co- Coach Roberts. You've got yeah. one of the best high school coaches in the United States of America. Yeah, yeah he's your awesome. Your results show it at who's number one. Your eight state championship, eight st- eight individual state champions last year for Dundee High School. How great of a coach is Coach Roberts, and how much does he let you guys have free reign? Because not all right. coaches are like that, man. That that's that's the like the best part about him, you know, the, the biggest thing, you know, um, to be, to be an athlete, to be a wrestler is to be coachable and coach Roberts as a coach is coachable. You know what I'm saying? Like he goes out and, and, you know, a lot of dudes are like, not like that. Like they'll get mad at their, at their athletes for going out and, and being around different coaches and different things. He's always like trying to learn and, and you can watch him just get better over, over the years. And he's always trying to learn from me, from from Scotty, from watching videos, sending videos in, you know, he's, he's awesome. And, uh, he, our, our team is evolving and he is too. So Dave habit as That's well, yeah. man. Right. He's the guys put you in a lot of situations to get better and win. Yeah. It's tough, man. He's gone. And, uh, that was my dude. You know, I first, I first got with him when I was hundred pounds, eighth grade cadet Fargo. That's right before then. And, you know, now he's gone. And I, I learned so much. Like, my wrestling went from, you know, here to here with him, like, scrambling. And, and just the way, the way, you know, you go about things. That dude's, like, not just an awesome wrestler, but he's an awesome dude. And, like. Make him better, man. Yeah. He, he made me so much better. Like, this things, the little weird things he does. Like, he's, like, standing there. And then he, and then he goes. You know, it's just. And, like, he showed me this thing. Where like you fake a fake, like you, it's it's like what Burroughs does. So like you level change, and you're like, you're like faking like a level change, like you're like nonchalant level changing, and then you just and you load up and you blast through the dude, like it's it's like this high level stuff that like some people don't even get, you know. Well, you're so explosive though. That's the thing about you. You you'll pull the trigger from space. Yeah. And you'll batter, you'll do board, you'll, you'll go full burrows. He uses his face as a battering ram. Yeah. 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 I see that. I think he did it to the Iranian the other day. I think he broke the guy's nose, chipped the guy's teeth. He just yeah. doesn't care. And he, and you know, you got to make those sacrifices. You want to be elite. That's something you got to do. If you're, mm-hmm. if you're an explosive guy like yourself or Jordan Burroughs and you can smack somebody in the face and they're, they're yeah, on the that's tracks, the best. I don't know what to that's tell the you. Best. Like you get those, those flurries or exchanges. And the dude's like low around his knees or he's not paying attention. And you just, and you just fold him, you know, like right, right in his face and you just blow him over. It's just the best. So, so Michigan has these horrible, awful high school rules, like just garbage (laughs) rules. And that's what really hurts you guys as far as your high school rankings, because you can't go and wrestle out of the state within a certain mileage and the state that you're wrestling. So you guys cannot wrestle a Pennsylvania team. No, it doesn't touch your state. And, and, and people have to put that in perspective. You know, you know, that says so much like we can't do that. And we, and we just have two guys. Number one, we can't wrestle, you know, that four months out of the year. And we have two guys. Number one, that shows our coaching staff and the guy, the opportunities that we have is impeccable. You know what I'm saying? That we can do that. Yeah, and Facundo, he he was able to be obviously super high level. Exactly. Davis has always done a really good job of it. Yeah, they come to the Medina, they go to, and and they have to they have to manipulate the field. So if you guys want to come to Ohio, Ohio can't have a West Virginia or a PA team there. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. That's the thing. That's an That's awful thing. rule. It's, it's a terrible, terrible rule. What is what's the reasoning? Wait, what is the reasoning? I think uh, they want to keep it pure, Jared. They want to keep it pure. I don't even know. Honestly, I don't even know. 
I well, that's know. like it. I'm telling you, they want it to remain like amateur. They want to keep the spirit of like. And in Indiana's the same way too, right? Is Indiana the same way? The worst rule ever. And I talk to their coaches about it all the time. Coach Hancock, he's always like, "Yes, yeah, worst rule ever, man. Ever, ever. Terrible." Casey, I gotta ask you the million dollar question for me. Um, I ask my wife this all the time. My wife went to Pioneer High School in Ann Arbor. Um, I asked Connor Brady, who's at Virginia Tech. You know, he's from Columbus, Ohio area. I got to ask you, why not Michigan? Why not Michigan State? Everybody asks me this. Um, That's a fair question. That's a good question you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, Okay, it's, just checking. Yeah. No, yeah, it's cool. You know, uh, I want to get out of Michigan, you know. Like, I'm – especially Ann Arbor, like, you know, how, like – that's just not my – that's not my thing being in Ann Arbor, and I've been in the Michigan room for – I know what they have to offer, and I actually – I watch how things go about in their room, and no, I'm not saying anything bad about Michigan. They're awesome. But, you know, I just it's just not for me. And Michigan State, same way. You know, I just – I want to get out. You know, you, you see a lot of – it should say a lot, you know. You see a lot of really good Michigan guys. Don't go anywhere near those, you know, the best guys. Um, I like – you know, I'm not saying anything bad about them, but – you know, especially I like I want to get out. I'm I'm outdoors, dude. Like I want to be in the middle of nowhere, sort of. You know what I'm saying? And just Ames has got you. Yeah, Ames has got me, man. They got for you sure. for sure. That's a cool spot, though. Right? Yeah, it is. It is. I um, so I went down there on my official visit, and I was able to. It was it was before who's number one still, and I was like. A really good friend of mine, my one, of my one of my dad's good friends, lives in Jefferson, Iowa, which is about forty minutes from Ames. So I got to go to the one of the Seabolt practices when I was down there, and it was it was awesome, you know. So knowing that Seabolt's you know forty minutes away from where I'm gonna be is that's awesome to hear too. So nice, nice. We got Kevin Dresser, Kevin Dresser, yeah. Yeah. Kevin Dresser, uh, Matt Calf, Derek St. John. They got a great staff, right? Who's the fourth? Um, I, I'm not sure, honestly. It might be Kyvin, Kyvin's there. I know Kyvin trains yeah, there. Yeah, Kyvin's there. I'm not sure, honestly. It was Coach Zadek. Willie. No, yeah. it was no, not Willie. Willie yeah, Willie was a GA there. And now Willie's at Michigan State, right? Yeah, Willie's at Willie, Willie's at Michigan State. But Willie was, I think Willie was a coach there. He was their fourth for a minute, I think. They might just Maybe. be rolling with three, huh? Yeah, I think that's what they're doing right now. And the website's Fernando. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, it's Fernando. Yeah, yeah. Fernando? Oh, okay. But it was Willie, and then I don't know if they had one for a year, unless it was Fernando last year. Because Willie's been at MSU for a year now, a year yeah. and a half. Yeah. Okay, got it. Oh, man, I love it. I love hearing – I love that question because a lot of people give you a lot of different answers. You know, my wife went to Pioneer High School. She could hear Michigan Stadium from her house – uh, the, 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 the crowd and the band, right? Like, cause it was on the tape delay and she was right. like, yeah, it was the craziest thing ever. When I was a kid, we would know if they scored beforehand cause the band and the crowd, we would hear that. <laughs> and it's like a seven to 10 second TV delay. Right. And you know, she talked about that. And, and if you, do you know where pioneer high school is? No, I'm, I'm it's I, it's directly a... caddy corner directly caddy corner. Like if you Google map it after this, you're going to be like, Oh yeah, he's just, it's as close as he says it. It is from the corner. You can hit Michigan stadium with a baseball. Oh, wow. Yeah. Zero exaggeration. Like it's that close. That's crazy. See, like, that's the thing. Like I couldn't imagine living in there, like in that environment, yeah. that environment but like just so many people and it's just, I can't do it, man. I can't do it. No. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's 10,000 people. It's, it's a hundred and, probably 150,000 people partying every Saturday. Yeah. It's wild, man. And it's, but it's big, but now, you know, you're going to the big 12, you're going to Ames. It's, it's a cool spot where, you know, Ames is situated in a cool spot. So yeah. And Ames, Ames is actually pretty small too. So like, that's the thing. And it's, and it's, it's spread out as well too. So I like big ag, ag school. Are you going to go into like some type of vocational agriculture type thing? I'm not too sure yet. Um, I couldn't tell you, but I mean, I've been, I, possibly possibly yeah okay cool does your dad raise dogs yeah that's the thing um we got a dog kennel we don't oh yeah we do we actually we breed them and my dad we train uh labrador retrievers 
Um, so you're totally outdoors. Like you're going yeah, there, they're retrieving, yeah, you're hunting. Got, I just got back in from tree stand. Bow I hunting love it. Tonight. I so love I, it. Opener for duck seasons this uh for Michigan is this weekend. So I'll be out there. Oh, that's awesome, man. Do you go to Cabela's much? Yeah, I mean Cabela's is right next to me. Oh, I'm 10 minutes from Cabela's. There's one in Dundee, obviously, but uh yeah, I go there all the time. Awesome, man. I love it. Uh Blazer's coming on here soon. You gonna stick around for a little yeah, yeah, yeah. bit? Stick on, stick on, Casey. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. We've got I'll Blazer talk. coming on. How? What's the weight weight difference between you and Joey? Uh, I honestly don't even know how much the dude weighs. I I think he weighs like one sixty or something like that. What are you right now? Like 45, 50? Oh, I'm probably 52, 54. You that big? Yeah, dude, I was that big. You know, I made I made thirty eight. I mean, but I did it right, and it was it, it felt good. So Blazer, welcome. Well, I'm pretty good. big. Casey, hey, uh, what's, up? what's up? What's up, buddy? <laughs> Nothing. Okay, you guys are club teammates, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so Burnett train guys on the, on the call, and then we had uh, Dylan Fishbeck. He's been coming to the camps for like the last six or seven years. So we get Burnett guys on here. You know, I know Burnett guys. I used to be the mat mopper and the <laughs> toilet plunger there for a while, and the, uh, torture everybody in the morning guy. So. They have uh, – Jack does all that now, doesn't he? Ah, uh, yeah. Coach Jack's oh, yeah. the old uh... – Yeah, 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 Jack. Jack does it. The, the Hawk – hey, Casey, remember, he's a Hawkeye. Watch him. Yeah, right, man. Hawkeyes don't know what's coming. <laughs> he's the enemy. <laughs> he's the enemy, right? The enemy. Oh. Okay, Blazer. So, we got Joey Blazer on here. Mr. Uh, upset of the year, Casey Swiderski, but only three people knew about it. But it was coming. Right. Casey, Mendez, and apparently Dylan Fishbeck. Joey, did you know the upset of the year was coming? Zeb, come on, man. I trained with him every day. I knew that was coming. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, Joey, I knew what was going on. Joey knew. Joey knew. Joey's probably been juggernauted before, is my guess. Yeah, a couple times. You yeah, ever been run Joe, through? Yeah. You ever run through you? <laughs> yeah, Joe, yeah. Me and Joe went at it, Zeb. Let me tell you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we was, had some scraps every day. Well, man, we had this one practice, and Scotty, or Scotty was like, you know, what won you that match was that that practice. So we had to do. Well, I mean, we were already, you know, pretty deep into the practice. We'd done like a bunch of goes, and it was, uh, um, it was super slippery in there, and it was first one of three takedowns at the end of practice. And if you think we're getting three takedowns, any less than an hour. You're, you know, that's not happening. Oh like, three, like, it's not happening. So we went, I don't know, it's probably at 20, you know, 15, 10 minute, 15, 10 to 15 minute go, maybe even longer. You know, I don't have a shirt on. He doesn't have, you know, we're, we're sweating, you know, it's, and I got to this dude's leg so many times I could not finish. And I was just, you know, I was at, I was at my breaking point, you know, it was just, I, you know, I ended up getting it, but it was, it was wild, man. So Blazer's frustrating to wrestling, wrestle what you're, is that what you're saying? He's, he's hard to wrestle. He's all Gumby. 100%, dude. Yeah. It's frustrating. Hey, we, yeah, we have some good scraps. Yeah. Frustrating to watch. <laughs> it's frustrating. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I feel bad for people. I'm like, this guy's really hard to wrestle. Like, I wouldn't want to do this. Right, right. Yeah. And Casey, you're normally you can pick people up and put them down real hard, right? Like, you're explosive. Yeah. He's really good at neutralizing that, isn't he? Yeah, he is. You know, he's, he's, he knows dead weight. He knows dead weight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome uh casey before we let you off what is next for you where are we going to see you compete like beside what college open is it michigan state open like, where dude, can we definitively I, see you next i'm gonna i'm gonna leave that uh up to the entry list as of right now <laughs> but um dude um the season the high school season right now we have we got a tough task ahead of us this year we got we're, we're pretty um you know, we're pretty light right now. You know, we don't have much and we're going to have to pull really uh, be committed and pull together to win another uh, team title, which I, that's my goal, you know, for individual and for team. So like, it's going to be huge to do that. And uh, yeah, college opens, you know, you, you'll see me, you'll see me at a couple. So Will you do freshman, sophomore, do you think? Yeah, I, I would assume. Yeah. Because you know, you can go freshman, sophomore open. Yeah. 
I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I might, you know, I may be the first, maybe the first couple will just be freshman, sophomore, and then I'll throw myself out there, which, you know, me, you know, I don't care. So, I love it. yeah, run through some plate glass windows or some sliders or whatever it yeah. takes to get warmed up. I don't know, whatever, yeah. whatever you need to do, right? Yeah. I love it. Casey, thank you for the time. Do you got anything else for us? You got any stories? We don't have to let you go. I mean, I, we're going to get into Blazer here a little bit because. Blazers coming from a BTW practice. I know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, ah, dude. You know, hey, give me a second. Talk to Joey for a little bit, and I'll, I'll, I'll hit you with a story. Good chime back in. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I'm just glad. I'm glad you're willing to tell a story. Okay, so hey, we all, all right, we'll introduce story. Joe. So we got Joey Blaze on, Ohio State champ from Perrysburg, uh, coming from a Burnett train practice. Actually, his high school coach is Scotty Burnett at Perrysburg. Joey was Perrysburg's first state champ since 2015, I believe. Oh, 16. 16. Scotty's and first state champ. So whenever Scott, you're was. Scotty's first state champ as the head coach. Okay. And then you had a pan in overtime, didn't you? Yeah. Was it Niffin Negger? Mm-hmm. And he's going to Army. Uh, Navy, I think. Navy. Okay. So what weight does it look like this year? Because we got weird weights. Casey, what are your guys' weights normal, or are you guys never left? Yeah, we're, we're the same still. So. so you're 38 this year? Well, no, it's one of – it's – 40. It's 40. 40. I'm not going 40. No, I'll probably be at – you know, in Michigan, I always bounce around and get really big, you know, for the team or whatever. So, I mean, last year, I was 145 a state. Um, so you could be at 52. I could be anywhere, dude. I honestly could be anywhere. <laughs> Blazer, how big are you going to be this year? Fifty? Uh, I mean that that might be the plan. I don't know. Like right now, I'm going to go 45 for Super 32, and I might try to get down to 44 for Ironman. But uh, like we got a good kid on our team, Winton. I mean, you know Winton. Uh, he's pretty tough, and he's he's smaller than me, so I think it'd make our lineup better if he's going 44 and I'm going 50. So everybody we've talked to, Jared tonight was committed is committed to a big time program. Shoemate, Ohio State, uh, Fishbeck, NC State, and Casey's going to Iowa State, right? Joey, 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 you know, I know you're only a junior and those guys are all older than you, but um, w- what's it looking like right now, Joey? Talk us t- about the recruiting trail. You just had a visit, right? Uh, yeah, I just went to Purdue uh, this past weekend. It was, uh, it was awesome. Uh, I'm going to go to Virginia Tech this weekend, and uh, honestly, I got a – I got a top five. I mean, I don't know if I have a top five, but I got a top two right now. Sounds like Purdue and uh, Virginia Tech. Yeah. Okay. Awesome, man. Good. Good for you. That's that's good. So so official visits lined up for both. Casey, what were your officials? Okay, so this is crazy. But um, that was, I just went to Iowa State not too long ago, and that was my first official visit ever because of COVID. I didn't get to go on any visits. Man is a maniac. There's this man is out of his mind. So yeah. Um obviously I'd been to Ames and uh I knew where I was going. I'll tell you that much. Do you have a really good relationship with Coach Metcalf? Because he's a Michigan guy. Is that like yeah. what the connection is? Yeah, yeah, that that's one of the bigger reasons. Metcalf and uh just the state of Iowa itself too is you know, I like you know the the, the population in Iowa is like the same amount of population of Detroit. Like the whole state of Iowa is the same as Detroit. Think about that. You know, like there's, you know, I'd rather have more deer hunting than people, you know. <laughs> so. uh, Blazer. What's good? What's the first competition for you? Casey's going right to the opens. What are you going to compete at? Uh, Super 32. What weight? 45. 45. So they go, are they going old school weights? Like what Michigan's at right now for super 32. Uh, they're just is doing that, national weights. What are the national? I don't, is it six, 13, yeah. Yeah, 20. Totally used to. Okay. What all, I don't know what Ohio is doing. We eliminated a weight, didn't we? Uh, I think we like eliminated one, but slotted in a middle weight, I believe. Cause there's still 14. Okay. What did we eliminate? 82. We, we made the upper weight 90, didn't we? 
Yeah. It goes 75 and nine to 90 to two. Yeah. We combined 82 and 90, essentially 82 and 95 are now 90. Right. Jared, is that basically what happened? Yeah. Right. What middle weight do we add? It goes 26, 32 as it did 38. And then it goes a 44, 50, 57, 65, 75. So, so I, effectively, we added 44, 50, and 57, right? We added, there's like one added there, yeah? Right. Okay. Which I'm all right with because I like, I like, I mean, let's be honest. When you're big guys, you know, you got a lot less big guys coming sport. out anyway. It's hard filling those weights. We know that. Just kind of so, okay. real quick, right? It's kind of quick for Ohio. Yeah, I don't like what they did. But, uh, uh, Joey. Good. You are at, you are at Super 32. Anything else that you, before you hit Iron Man? Uh, not as of right now. No, okay. So you guys are just training through Super Thirty Two, and then your next cycle will be Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Casey, do you guys go to anything that's even remotely? What, like, what's the best tournament you guys get to go to? That's like an in in season Dundee tournament. Brexville. So you guys do get to go to Brexville. Yeah, I mean, I've only been there twice. Okay. I wrestled freshman year. I got second. I lost to Rowan in the finals in overtime. He's at Stanford. He's pretty good. Yeah. And then uh, my sophomore year, I had the worst weight cut of my life. And I ended up getting pinned in the semis by Watson Eisel at 120. What'd you finish? Third. Joey, are you at Brexville? Uh, yeah, we'll be there. Oh, we can see you guys wrestle. I love it. I love everything about it. We could see you guys wrestle with Dursky Blazer matchup. Jared, tell them who else could potentially wrestle at Brexville that we had on the show earlier. Shoot me. I'll be at 38 for Brexville, so they probably won't have. Come on, Casey. <laughs> Jeez, oh, Pete's. That's you run right. through plate gra- glass doors. Hey, we scrap and fight enough at practice. We don't yeah. We don't need to bring it out in a competition. I can just come and video on. that. I'll just video that and put it on the internet. Yeah, yeah. I want to see that go. I want to. I want to come in for one of those goes. Those three first to three, best two out of three. I want that. Oh, it will be there for all night. I you can uh, count me out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you don't know, back down? Whatever you back down from nothing. Yeah, so yeah. You will. So there's no certification where you can't go 38. Like there's no. You can go up as high as you want in Michigan and still go to 38 for the out of state tournament. Well, I mean, Brexville is like one of us earliest tournament so um i mean i won't be going up until got it so you'll be down that's, early anyway yeah i go that that's when i always go down and then you'll see me no less than 45 honestly probably so 33 or 41 at the college 41 yeah i think so i think so um i think i'll come in there perfect 41 you know so i'll probably be a lifetime 41 to be honest with you i haven't grown in a while so i'm chilling Blazer, what do they got you at? 4957? What's what are they recruiting you as? Do you uh, know? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, like 49 through 65, that area. 40, 49 through, hey, he's a 49, could be a 65. We don't know yet. Yeah, it just depends. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, 65, maybe, maybe 74. Why not? Yeah, who knows when I start lifting? You I don't know. It happen. Seriously lifting. That's what hey, uh, that's what Fishback said. Fishback said COVID actually like hooked him up because he never fishback's like yeah i never lifted he goes and then during covid you know there was nothing else to do i had to lift i don't know if he said there was nothing else to do but he dedicated to lifting is what he said four days a week and got serious about it i dedicated myself to eating during uh covid joey Joey, 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 at noac state what was he crushing chaco tacos or something how many chaco (laughs) tacos did you eat you know this man eats he does not eat one choco taco you know that right dude this man i know i know joey for the eating man hey joe when you were in michigan how far did you live from casey and dundee i mean five minutes just about there yeah. you guys were that close dude dude let me tell you oh here's my story oh here we go then we're now we're yeah, letting you go go ahead story. i know what he's gonna I'm tell us that story Okay, um, so I moved from Ida, and so did Joey. We all went to Ida schools, which is, like, right down the road from, from Dundee. It's, like, Dundee's rival. That's terrible. Um, 
So me, okay, so I mean me, Stony, Joey, um, my brother, you know, we all went to Ida and we all transferred out. So I mean we we're all from the same school originally. And we all transferred out. I mean, there, Logan Brown went there, too. I don't know if you remember him. He was really good. Bunch but of killers. I yeah. Michigan had a bunch of killers. Yes. And if we all would have stayed there, you know, Dundee would be nobody probably right now. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. But, like. Come on. Dundee still would have been good, man. Yeah. You know that. Come on. Yeah. But, like, they wouldn't be nobody. But, you know, obviously, hey, if I would have stayed at Ida, I can't say that we. I would be good anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Coach Roberts is a pretty good coach. Yeah, exactly. So, so there you go. Okay. So is, is that your story or do you have a story? I got no stories, dude. I don't know. I, I you know, I, <laughs> I thought, I thought there was like this commonality of a story that Joey knew that it was, you were going to bury Joey. That was the story. That's what I knew. That yeah, was the story. That was it. We're, we're all from the same place. All from the same place. Yeah, I thought the there was going to be like, Joey was in fourth grade and he did like the Billy Madison thing, and then everybody else acted like they peed their pants too. It was I thought that was going to be the story. I thought you were yeah, going to like, dude, I, yeah, I, but I, I saved him because I acted like I peed my pants too. No, that wasn't it, dude. I I'm going to think of a story as soon as I get off the Zoom call, probably. So like, I I, I can't. I mean, Joy can have a story. Ask Joy, man. I mean, we got we got a lot of stories, honestly. Oh, blazer. Oh, blazer. too many. I don't know if I want to say all of them. Yeah. Hey, well, spill a story, man. Spill a story, and then I'll head out. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I dude, we just got so many. I don't know. What, I don't know what to say. I'll tell a story. All One right, time, right. Joey came to vacation with my family and I with the Burnettes. My wife was pregnant with Thomas, my son, who's turning four this month. And my wife and Ferdinand was like. A year and a half old, right? Oh, and we went when's your lake. son's birthday? Huh? When's his birthday? October 25th. Ah. Anyhow, Joey Blaze just like shows up out of nowhere on a family vacation. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, oh, okay, Joey Blaze is here. All right, cool. <laughs> and so we were just like, it was a horrible setup. Jody, Jody Burnett found like this place and the guy lied to us and told us it was on the beach and we had to we had to drag the coolers through like a swamp legit a swamp yes joey yes legit swamp like all the kidding bridge aside, broke, remember swamp. huh the bridge broke like then the, the little yeah, we were, we were, yes we were walking across people's private property and we were getting super mad which i don't blame them so we're there we're hanging out all of a sudden like the it was like it was lake huron and we're hanging out and they're like Joey and Max Burnett go out and they're like, Hey, there's like something out here in the water. And I was like, Oh yeah, whatever. And they're like, there's a shipwreck out here. We're like, what? There's a shipwreck. These dudes found a ship that wrecked over like 120 years ago. That was like beached. We went, I, I just found the uh, videos from it. Joe, I'll have to uh, send it to you. I Those found are- the videos from, we found a shipwreck. I was like, who finds a shipwreck on vacation? Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, and then Scotty's like, dude, you still have the videos of that shipwreck? I was like, no one's going to believe me that we went out, we saw a sh- we, we found a shipwreck on vacation. We found a shipwreck. And then then um, Max almost drowned trying to chase his uh, raft. That was great. It was a good time. And that, yeah, I, was- I think that's how he actually found it because his raft blew away. And he was like, I, there's something over there. Was that what it was, Joey? Yeah, I think. And then remember we were in that little river thing and we found that bike. <laughs> what a ridiculous like, vacation. It was ridiculous. And then the guy said, oh, you guys can't have fires. So, of course, we had a fire. Yeah. And then the guy accused us of having a fire inside the house. And we we're like, dude, it's summer. Why would we have a fire in the house? And what are you what are you talking about? It yeah. was easily the worst like a- Airbnb uh, VRBO rental of all time. Yeah. Uh, but we found a shipwreck. That's well, my story. Um, That's my story. Yeah, I'll let I'll let you guys get, get it with Joey. So Casey, thank you for the time. Mr. Mr. Pound for Pound Slayer. Mr. Upset of the Year, I guess well, three people knew. Four people now with Joey. 
Thank you for the time. Good luck at the college opens. We'll be running into you at Brexville, all right? Yep, thanks. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Yep, later. Hey, all right, Blazer. Talk to us. What's what, up? Is, can, can Perrysburg get the job done this year? Can I you think guys can. win a Division One state title, team title in the state of Ohio? I think we can. I think we need to get a couple guys on track, like getting routines of what we need to do to be able to win. But, I mean, we got the coaching. You know, if everybody sticks to what Scotty says, I mean, I feel like I'm proof for our team that you listen to what Scotty says and good things happen. What would you say, you know, what's your confidence level in your brother Marcus right now? He had a great Fargo. Was he fourth in Fargo? Yeah. Fourth in Fargo. Marcus is a freshman. Six or 13 or 20. Where do you guys, where do you think Marcus is going to slot for you guys this year? Oh, uh, he's going to be a, a perfect 13 for us. Cause we got a uh, Cole Evans. Who's he's, I don't know if he's Marcus's size. He's a little bit smaller. Maybe he'll fit perfect at one Oh six than Marcus. And then we have Ryan Avalos who's returned to state placer. Man, you guys got a squad, man. Yeah. Both, both Denkins is right. Mm-hmm. Yourself. Who else do you guys have coming back? Got Ewan? Yep, Ewan. Uh, oh, we have a returning state alternate, Jackson Hawker. Okay. He's, he's hopefully going to make the state this year, do good, place maybe. Uh, we got Diego Chavez, uh, returning state placer. He took seventh last year. And then uh, that's like our, our core of our lineup. How many returning placers, including yourself? Chavez, you, and? Avalos. Avalos. So three returning state placers, and then you have a, a Fargo Cadet All-American freestyle. Your, your baby brother, he's coming in. You guys got a good squad, man. And you're, you're, you're getting tested right away at Ironman too, right? Yep. I think we can do it. I think we can beat St. Ed's. So is Ewan the only senior? Is he the only? Uh, Witten's brother, Allenson, is a senior. Welcome. You and guys got a great off- team. You got a great team. Yeah. We're going to be good for the for a while, I feel like. Yeah. Uh, what's the age difference between Marcus and Gray? Uh, two years, <laughs> I think. Gray guy's in seventh grade. Marcus is in ninth grade. So it's two years. So it'll be like what I have with Marcus. Uh, gotcha. Get two, get two solid years in with him. Yeah, man. It, 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 you know, obviously beating St. Ed's, and then you got teams like Brexville, you got Wadsworth, you got LaSalle. As you know, you got a LaSalle guy you're probably going to have to beat to win another state title. Mm-hmm. You got all these teams, and then obviously Kaufman, Marysville, you got all these teams. Elyria, I said Elyria, I believe, but uh, Northeast Wadsworth. Ohio's got great teams. Obviously, St. Edward. I mean, Perry, Maslin Perry. I mean, there's just all these teams that are really good. And it's such a deep, 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 you know, division to win. Is there any doubt in your mind when you guys talk every day that you guys can't be, and not, not like we got to beat St. Ed's all those other guys are in there, right? Like I, I literally like mm-hmm. Wadsworth could win, man. Rexville yeah. could win, man. They all could win. Illyria could win. Kaufman. Right, Kaufman. Kaufman, yeah, yeah, yeah a bunch of really good tough. guys. They got a really good team. Uh, I yeah. mean, in my mind, in my mind at least, I feel like we got uh, no doubt. Like, uh, I feel like our team to if we're all together and we're all dialed in, I feel like we're gonna be a tough team to beat. Uh, duels might be a little shaky, like dual state title because of just our forfeits, but I feel like we could still get it done. And then, uh, but team like individually i feel like we we can do it we can push through it and get that state title so you guys well interesting fact about you you're joe blaze four right yep so jared this is probably going to be a learning moment for you so joe blaze one is the same age as papa ferd miller no, I, Joe Blaze two is. No, Joe Blaze oh, no. one is yeah. the same age as my Papa Ferd. Joe Blaze two is the same age as my dad. Joe Blaze three is the same age as my brother Ferd and Chad. And then this Joey Blaze is like Wyatt's age. So there's four generations. They're all iron workers. They're iron workers. His grandpa, Joe Blaze two, 
was Joe Blaze one of the business agent too? Was he an iron worker business agent guy too? I believe so. I think he was. So they're all iron workers to start. And then they turn to the business side of it. And the reason my dad has such a, like a really great retirement is because Joe Blaze too was really good about how they were investing money, how they were pulling money in, putting money into annuities, all these different things, what they were doing with their health plans. So the Blazes, he he would be the fourth generation of iron workers wow. if he were to become an iron worker, him or Marcus, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm guessing if you're going to Virginia Tech, Purdue, or wherever you go, you are probably not going to be entering entering into the uh, the apprenticeship. Is my is that my guess? Yeah, probably not. I mean, I don't see it. I don't see it happening. And there's nothing. That's a really good living. They make a really good living, but it's tough work. Yeah, hard work. Hard work on the body. <laughs> Real hard work on the body. But my dad, it's great to hear my dad. He's like, they they work out of a lift. I climbed all the columns. I connected. I did this. I did that. Okay, you're a maniac. Relax. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that about them. Uh, Jared, did you know that the Blazers did not, I did not firmly entrenched in the uh, local 50 fire iron workers? Learn something new every day, Zim. You learn something new every day, and they, they've done a great job and great friends to my family. So, hey, my dad gets to uh, hang out in Florida half the year. So uh, tell, your, tell your grandpa, thank you. <laughs> I will. Appreciate that. That's Joe Blaze, too. Yep. So you guys all literally have the same middle name, right? What's your full name? Mm-hmm. Uh, Joseph Daniel Blaze. Everybody's Joseph Daniel. Mm-hmm. I just got to put this out there to you. There might be a little pressure on you. I know. There's, there's. Are you gonna do it? Yeah. Have a son. I mean, are you gonna do it? No brainer. No brainer. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So Joe Blaze won the same age as Papa Ferd, same generation at least. How long ago did Joe Blaze one pass? Uh, probably two years ago. He was. He lived. How old was he? Uh he was close to a hundred. I think. Yeah, I think because was... him and Papa Ferd are about the same age. Wow. Did he fight in World War uh, World War Two? I'm not sure. I mean, I think he was in the army, but I or the navy or whatever. But I'm not sure. Yeah, Papa Ferd was in the uh, navy. My my Papa Ferd, my brother, our grandpa, right? Mm-hmm. Same as Joe Joe Blaze one. So you got to do it, dude. There's some pressure there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looks like sounds like you're up to it though. Yeah, I'm I, I'm down. I'm game. <laughs> I love it. I love it, dude. It's the best. My kid is Ferdinand. He's the fourth Ferdinand, but we skipped a generation because no, my Papa Ferd didn't name any of my uncles or my dad after him. So we skipped. We're four out of five generations of Ferd. Hey, I mean, still the fourth, though. Yeah, still Ferd the fourth. Ferd the four. Four Ferd. But uh, <laughs> Joe, you got – or uh, Jared, you got anything else for Joe here? No, I just want to hear it's about – school your, night. It's school night. Yeah, we got to get him get him to bed, right? Probably uh... – just walked to the door from a workout tonight, right? So, so yeah, we, brother, I was an older brother. So, what's it like having a little brother? Yeah, obviously, he's a lot smaller than you, but you know, I, I had that same situation two years younger, but we battled it out. What, what's it like being an older brother? Um, you know, in the room with him, although you don't you know, compete with each other. I mean, it's good. I mean, like, whenever we do some of our goes, I like to grab him. Like, when I mean, like. For like, I didn't grab him as much when I was training with Casey because it was like I was either going with Casey or Scotty, like really hammering with them and like getting really good workouts in. But like, we'll do some extra after these practices and I like to grab Marcus because I want to get him tough and and I'm confident that he can win four state titles. And I mean, he he always thinks he can get me, but he (laughs) he doesn't know. You lay the smack down, let him know, right? Yeah. Just like you did, Jared. Here, brothers, come on. Yeah, we were we were close in size. We were one way class apart, so it's a little different. You know, we we're yeah essentially the same size. So okay, the best thing, my favorite thing about Joey Blaze, nicest guy you'd ever want to meet. Why are you such a nice guy, man? Why are you just? Where does that come from? You're easy going, easy to deal with, just a nice guy. Like I would love my, you know, my kids can be around you. I want my kids around a guy like you, right? Where do you think that mm-hmm. comes from, Joey? I mean, my dad and my grandpa, for sure. They're they're two of the most easygoing joke like joking guys of that I'm around. And Scotty's real easygoing. I feel like everybody in my life that I'm around that I look up to is pretty easygoing. There it is. Marcus is a little different though. Marcus got a little edge to him. 
Yeah, he he yeah, he's he's the the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, he's different. He's just different. I mean, Casey's different, right? Casey was on the show. Yeah, he's he, different. Casey's got an edge to him. He's got an attitude. I like it. Yeah. So Marcus reminds me a little bit of Casey. I mean, like Casey and I have been best friends, like growing up and everything wrestling every day for 10 years. And uh, he reminds me a lot of Casey, oh, like with their attitudes. I mean, we had uh, shoemate and fish back there. You're a little different too, right? Zem? I mean, yeah. Just yeah, they're all in the approach. Everyone's a little different, right? Yeah, everybody's different. I like that. But uh, if you were to give me a list right now, we already know Virginia Tech. We know Purdue. Could you give me a five? Could you give me five schools? Uh, Purdue, Virginia Tech, Clarion, uh, Kent, Rutgers, NC State. So that's six right there. Nice. That's, that's a good that's – that's a good six, man. And, and George Mason. George Mason. That's seven right there. That's seven. Good when you me. are a guy like yourself, right? You're a sophomore state champ. Um, COVID took your freshman year. And, you know, that's a huge – when you win as a fre- as a sophomore, right? Like, they're they're on you, man. You win the biggest, toughest division in Ohio. It's the deepest division at least, right? And they're on you, man. Is it – those are the guys who've called and reached out or are those the ones you're down to or, you know, like how, how do you get to those seven? Is that who's, like, giving you the most love? Like how, how, how do you – how do you determine that? Uh, I feel like, like I got called by more schools. Like I probably got called by 15 to 20 schools, but like, yeah, they're all showing me love and uh, they're all being real. They're all like staying in contact. You know what I mean? Like every week to three weeks, I'm getting a call, a text asking how I'm doing, asking how everything's going. Gumby style, Gumby style. (laughs) Do you think that you're eventually going to get on a weight program and get out of the Gumby mode and, or do you think it's going to be Gumby for life? Uh, I mean, I've been, I've actually been lifting hard lately. Uh, Scotty, I've been taking lifting a lot more seriously because I have figured out in some of them bigger matches that I'm, you can't just be gooey and you got to be tough and be in there. And I, I've learned that a lot being tough. And uh, oh. that's why like, I was bummed out because I got surgery on my hand this summer. I didn't get to wrestle at all. So that's why I'm really hammering in for Super 32. I want to I want to prove a point. I want to go out there and uh, dominate. So the goal is the belt, but who who do you want to see down there? Who, who, who are some of the guys you want to see down North Carolina? I mean, honestly, anybody. I'll wrestle anybody anywhere. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I, lo- I love everybody's attitude that we've talked to tonight. Everybody is so confident in their abilities. I love it. And nobody's cocky. That's what I really like. <laughs> and that doesn't even bother me right like that doesn't bother me at all if someone's a little cocky but like everybody's like on their grind and, and confident in their abilities and i think that's what it takes to win an ncaa title you know win win yeah, the fire, sure. win everything right i saw something like a post the other day i think it might have been like david goggins but he said like when there's doubt you can lose this like you can someone that is you're better than can pass you up it's true He's not lying. When you go in there with supreme confidence, uh, you're going to get good results. I agree. 100%. Love man. it. Love it. Uh, Jared, I'm good on the blazer. I'm we good, did find a, We did find a shipwreck together. That's all I got for you on stories. But, um, Thanks Jared, give us, a, give us a quick promo here. Give me a quick promo here. Come on. Oh, the Matt Media? Yeah, I'm excited yeah. for this year. <clears throat> Obviously, you know, Ohio Cast's a big piece of that. You've been putting in the work for the last 12 years. we got some other guys, right? Rob Gore, Mark Neiman, Bryce Roth, and Andrew Gasper. And, uh, oh, geez, look, at there's the hair, right? Look like uh, Swiderski. <laughs> look at how jacked he is. Look at how jacked uh, he is, Blazer. Nemeth, Nemeth did 100 <laughs> push-ups. I didn't do any push-ups. Look at how jacked. Hey, this is Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, he – Oh, he yeah. He's looking big. Oh, to- look at Tolar's yoke, too. Tolar's always yoked, right? Oh, my God, Jared. It looks like you're on the sauce, bro. No, no. Yeah, you need to get me one of them go Ohio cast shirts. Of course I will. These are the old ones here, right? Take yeah, we'll get you some, dude. I'll hook you up. I'll get I give you stickers all the time, don't I? Yeah, I got I I'm stickered a sticker. up. I'm a sticker. Oh wait. You're a sticker. Hold on. Mule. Hold on. Don't don't go anywhere just yet. <laughs> oh yeah. You want to see yeah, real man, jack. Real jack. Holograms. Oh geez, oh Pete Zeb. Come on, man. <laughs> Look at him. He's a baby. 
Have, have you seen my dad? He's <laughs> just it's a baby. All DNA, man. It looks... Dude, how many covers you got? How many? Is it just two? I don't know. I, I don't. There's I... another one. We're going to find it. <laughs> We're going to find all your covers. I'll have them on here. I want to probably display them in the background, I think. But look at him. Look at the little guy. What year is this, Jared? Do you know? That's senior year. Dude, you're fit. You don't look like an old man or anything. That's good. You look good still. Good work. Glad you're still jacked. Ah, Blazer, Joey, thanks, thanks for coming on, brother. On, Joey. Thank you for having me. It was yeah. fun. Oh, awesome. Jared, fun. Jared, check everything out. Guys, we got we got we got a signal deal. Hey, you guys were a barbarian. Yes, they did. Praise yeah. Barbarian. I hey, need wait, all right. Wait, come out. Do you get to design a singlet? What what did yeah, you? Yeah, I need to show you it. I need to show uh, yeah, you it right see. now. Oh, this is on. perfect. You're on the Barbarian Hour. Yes, Scotty Joey Thomas. Blaze, I'm, state I'm... champ, Perrysburg, won the state title. The agreement was between the coaching staff. If you won state, you got to design a single. I am not is getting it. Glaring? No, yeah, it's too bright. Hold on. Oh, oh, that was, I don't know what that was. But... Talk, talk while you're doing it so it goes to you. Go, Joey. Talk. Uh, It's like. So what we did was I bet with that uh, we'd get singlets if I won. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Go keep talking. And uh, Scotty and I have been talking for a while about a belt on our singlets, like the Penn State belts. And then uh, Jody, uh, who, who designs the singlets for Barbarian? Josh Sasty. He, he, uh, whipped up a couple designs i think and jody sent me them and i saw that one and it was sweet and it's it's a little bit wit doesn't like white singlets so i got it a little bit to mess with him a little bit yeah because they're hard to keep clean and they stain yeah. and if you got different water that's not city water they get yellow yeah yeah mine's gonna I be hanging it. up like on my ceiling so nothing I gets on it. it you earned it dude you earned that barbarian yeah. singlet it's gonna be a whole team set isn't it yeah so those are the finalist singlets or what the what? Well, they oh, be the no, we'll probably just wear them at duels and stuff. Okay. Awesome, nice. man. That's so cool. That's so I awesome. I love it. You earned it. Uh, go to www.barbarianapparel.com. You can get your own custom singlets. I'm guessing they're not going to make the whole entire team wear your custom singlet because you got to win a state title, and Joey Blaze did that. Blazer, thanks <laughs> for coming on the show. Stick around a little bit. We'll talk to you. All right. They brought the boom truck. Uh, oh, like wait, sorry again. Old house Joey, start again. Go again, Joey. Wait, you guys start again, oh, man. Okay. So uh, Tate and T-Bone came over and brought a turf, like big turf from Whitmer over to our house. When we lived in Idaho, we had a barn. And T-Bone and Tate were like backing up the boom truck. And T-Bone was like left, left. And Tate was bringing it. I, it might have been right. I don't know. But then your dad was like, I said the other left. And they were just yelling at each other. And it was so funny. Like a like a old married couple, <laughs> and then my dad said when they were loading them up, loading up the turf, Tate was like, "Oh, we can get five pieces on that." That the turf guy, like that was bringing the turf in, he was like, "He doesn't know what he's talking about." They put five pieces on, and the boom truck like sinks, and they're like, and "They're like." Tate's like, take it off, take it off. And they're like, but you told me to. Yeah, you told, you moron, you you said, you made me do this. <laughs> hey, hey, he came here and cut a tree down for my neighbor, Bob. And he destroyed Bob's yard. <laughs> <laughs> he eventually had to wench himself out of Bob's yard we had to pull like a hundred feet of cable out of the boom truck and we had to hook onto a tree and pull him out because my yard slopes down our yard slopes down. We have the same hill. And this dude got so buried. He's, his backside was sliding into the woods. I was like, Oh my God, dude, he destroyed this guy's yard. Jesus. You know what though? My neighbor didn't complain. He fixed the yard. He was happy. The tree got taken down. You got the tree down. That's all that matters. All right, we got the job done. Did, hey, did they get the turf? Yeah, yeah. I think got it, the it, job it done. Actually, there you go. Tate Miller to the rescue. Tate yep. T Bone for people who don't know is my dad, Tom. You've heard the story about my dad when when Scotty was in between Tate and my dad, and Tate hit my dad with the truck. You know that story, right? 
Yeah. I was going to say, I'm not going to tell you. Just I'll send you the link. <laughs> He's, we got him to tell him the story on the Barbarian Hour. It was great. So That's awesome. All right, guys. I'm going to, to hang out with him. 